All right, so before uh, the actual Gintama episode starts, I'm going to start with saying this. Um, uh, so if you are someone who is interested in the Yakuza series, you can just click to the start of the video where it actually begins. But I just want to make a mention that I've been playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. And in there, there's a sub-story where you help an old man. And the 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 sub story starts with the um, the old man. He's buying like shaved ice, and he's dumping it up into the air and putting it on his head. Um, and you find out he's like, "Why is he doing that?" So the main character goes to talk to him. Was like, "Hey, old man, why are you doing that?" And the old man says, "Like, oh, the reason is is that actually I'm looking for the perfect snow." He's like, "You're looking for snow in Hawaii? That's stupid." And he goes like, yeah, it, it is, but you have to understand, my wife is basically on her deathbed, and the last thing that she wants to see is snow, because when the last time we went to Japan, there was snow, and it was something that really meant a lot to us, and I feel like I haven't done enough for my wife, because I was always working, so if I anything, I want to be sure that she sees snow before she goes, and the main character goes like, oh man, you, I can't just be let, I can't just leave shit alone, now that you've said that, I have to help you out, old man. And you go like, okay, that's the start of the sub-story. The old man, he wants to know. Cut to later on, you're at the mall. Uh, because, like, a dragon takes place in the real world. A baby with a stroller. Uh, a, a mother with a stroller. Um, she drops her stroller into a um, uh, the stairway. She goes like, my baby! Someone catch my baby! So then you have, a, have to do a chase, and you have to catch the baby's stroller. <laughs> And it's a full on like I'll save your baby, and then he's like running for it, and the stroller's like going fucking sideways, crazy. Um, and you finally catch up to the stroller. He's like, "I got you. Are you okay, baby?" You open it up. Grown ass man inside there, which is a character from previous Yakuza series, which is the groaning man baby. Uh, I think it's Go 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 Wardara. From now on, I'll just call him Man Baby, but it's a reoccurring character from the series who is a Yakuza boss who's really into infant play, <laughs> and he came to Japan specifically to do some infant play stuff with his family and enjoy the vacation. Um, through a bunch of weird happenstance, you end up fighting his men because he takes a nap um, right when you save him, and his men assume that you've kidnapped him. So you fight his men... He wakes up after the ass beating that you give his men. He's just like, what are you guys doing? This guy literally saved my life. Get, Go get some fucking, like, uh, milk. I need some milk. He's like, sir, it's so hard to find milk. Get me some powdered milk then, damn it. We need milk to make the situation better. <laughs> so you go off to go get milk, and you run into the old man who's looking for snow, and you accidentally drop some snow near the some of the diaper stuff, and you find out that the stuff that their diaper is made of, when you combine it with snow... When you, combine, when you combine it with the ice, it looks a lot like snow. So then Ichiban goes, I have an idea. We can use this. Because the old man gives you an update that basically he's saying that this is the final night for his wife. Um, they don't think that she's going to pull through. And he goes like, this is what we need to do. We need to take all these... Uh, I don't know how many diapers you have, but if we take your diaper things, we combine it with the ice, we can make snow, and we can make it snow for her. And the guy who's like the giant, a grown baby, he's like, you know what? You're 100% right. We gotta do it. We brought plenty of diapers. We're gonna help you out no matter what. It's time for this, you know, like, he's like, I can't believe you're willing to give it up. I know how much you love this. He's like, listen, sometimes a baby needs to grow up. And this is what a man needs to do. I can't leave behind a man after he said that that he needs to do this for his dying wife. So then you go off and the old man has a moment with his wife where he's talking about his regrets. And she kind of is in and out of it and she's not really talking. But before, uh, while he's saying this and he says, like, I really, like, I met a, a prince and he came from Japan and I really wish that I was like a prince to you. And she's able to wake up just briefly enough to say, like, don't have any regrets. I always loved you. You were my prince. And he opens the window and out through the window comes snow. And you, she sees she's able to see the snow and she has this moment of like, oh, my God, it's actually snowing. Cut to the roof. Ichiban and the baby crew are throwing together all these diapers and the people who are on the Yakuza team for the they are part of the the baby diaper gang are like boss what happens if we run out of diapers he goes like then you get butt ass naked this lady is seeing snow no matter what and <laughs> and you cuts back to it and there's this extremely loving moment between them as they see the snow and she says basically he's like please tell me anything that you want and she says to him 
before she passes on, the last thing I want to see is your smile, because it is the thing that has always been comforting to me. And it ends with her, she passes on, and as it's snowing, you see the snow fall into the old man's hands, and you see his tears, he's like, the snow is melting, and he's having this, like, lovely moment, and it cuts back to the top of the roof as they're finally finished with the snow. The other, the other men who were with him, who were in the diapers, they are now butt-ass naked because they had to take off their diapers to supplement the snow. Only ones, <laughs> and the only one who still has his diaper is the main boss, and he talks to Ichiban, and he goes like, do you think it made it? He's like, nah, I'm a hundred percent sure it, we made it and we did the right thing. And then it just, it, the sub story ends. It goes like to make it snow in Hawaii. And I finished that mission with a tear in my eye. And I said, God damn it. These people need to make a Gintama game. <laughs> Seriously. That's like the most Gintama thing I've ever heard in my life. It was, oh, I was like, oh my god, they should 100% make this. This is, it's killing me that they made Fist of the North Star and not get top of <laughs> Even though I haven't played the Fist of the North Star game and maybe it has that same moment. But that exact moment, I was like, god damn it. Someone needs to tell them to make one more Shonen Jump game. I will... It will kill me if we get a Gintama game somewhere down the line, and it is a re an arena fighter, and it is not an actual team from them, because they are so well oh built for doing it. We're totally going to get a Gintama game that's a fucking Bandai Namco arena fighter. Oh. I guess it's... Anyway, episode start. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime out there in existence that is available for us to watch in some capacity. And our main series are Gintama and Kuroko's Basketball. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Gintama in an arc called the Diviner Arc, and this is the final bit of what is known as Season 4, or the end of Season 1, depending on how you kind of want to run things. It is the final bit before, because we've already seen the Santa Arc, so this Diviner Arc is the last bit that we need for Gintama, and we can start off on uh, the other Gintama stuff. Obviously, there's still more episodes, but it's still a huge milestone for us that we're way past the halfway point with 201 episodes down out of 369 or so. So, whoo, big times. Let's go into it immediately with episode 195, Not Losing to the Rain. Go ahead, Zen, tell us what it's about. So, uh, Kintoki is at the Pachinko Parlor. And it starts to rain outside, and he's like, oh, shit, it's raining. Uh, and then a, a nice young lady gives him her umbrella, and it turns out to be the uh, weather girl that he's, like, um, Super in into. love with. Yeah, that, that he's, like, what, what does he call it? He calls himself, I think he just calls, is it just fan? I think he calls himself her fan. But he calls himself something in relation to her, like, at all times. Um mm. But he's, like, super into her. Um, and then there's, like, a talk show going on about how uh, she's really bad at her job, basically. That she, like, always gets the weather wrong. Um, and she's, like, super upset about it. And she's talking to uh, them, like, the, at the, the Odd Jobs crew about, like, working on it. And Kentoki gives this, like, dramatic speech. And he's, like, whatever it is that you're you're seeing uh he like pulls the blinds down on the window to watch the rain but then <laughs> the camera cuts to everyone else's perspective and there are no blinds <laughs> and Shimashi's like lost there's no blinds on that window and he's like still talking through the window but then it cuts again to gintoki's perspective and he's still holding the blinds that aren't there <laughs> uh and he's like whatever it takes to bring that smile back to your face and then Shimpachi's like yeah, the we gave her the, some tea, and she's smiling again. <laughs> she's already <laughs> smiling again. Um, the the, the, the like, you know, go ahead. He goes to like offer to help her, and she's like, uh, "Well, I don't want anyone to get hurt." And he's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? How would we get hurt with the weather channel?" And then a demon smashes through the wall, and she kills it. Um, 
and everyone's like, what the fuck? And then she's like, I'm actually uh, like an exorcist. I don't remember. I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh, it's, it's, it, it's it, it, I'm, uh, on my, fuck on, me. On the OG? On the OG. On the OG? Okay. The, uh, I'm just going to say exorcist. Yeah, she's say exorcist, exorcist, but I'm also going to give it off that I knew how to say it, and then Zen said the wrong thing, and it immediately, immediately popped it into my head, and I forgot how to say it. <laughs> but I swear to God, I knew how to say this Japanese word. <laughs> Go ahead. Exorcist from um, now on. Yeah, so she she reveals that her name is uh, actually Crystal, and she is uh, an exorcist, and the demon that she killed had a little mark, like a, a little charm left behind as proof that another exorcist sent the demon. Um, and then she... She does the weather report, gets it wrong again. She says that it's sunny, and then it immediately starts to rain. So the Odd Jobs crew goes to, uh, to like her family, like uh, exorcist residence, uh, and a bunch of demons jump out. And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna use the tag that because she gives him like a little uh, like paper tablet, like a paper charm." And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna use this, um, and summon the Shikigami to help us." And it doesn't work. Um, and then there's like actually it's the Shikigami's parents, and they start talking. It's like, hey, we really need the Shikigami, and they start fighting. And there's like a domestic violence dispute that starts breaking out, like over the phone, because it opens up like a speakerphone connection. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck is going on? Where the husband's like, get out of my way! I'm gonna fucking kill everyone. Uh, and eventually, the the father stabs or the mom. And they're all, like, freaking out. Um, and then finally, the demon appears. And she's like, sorry, I'm late. And Gintoki's like, oh, it's cool. And then they realize that she's wearing all black and holding a picture of her dead mother. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God. We summoned the Shikigami, and it's in mourning right now. <laughs> um, and they're, like, freaking out that they killed the Shikigami's mother. But it all ends up being a trick. Uh, and it was just to lure in the demons with sympathy, and um, she kills them all, and then everyone's like, wait, what about your mom? And she's like, what the fuck? That was obviously not real. Uh, I should tell you right now, there's two types of Shikigami in the world. There's loyal types, and then there's evil types that are forced into servitude, and I'm the evil type. So if you if you ever show any weakness, I'll I'll lash out and take you down. And Gintoki's like, guys, she's really scaring me right now. <laughs> um, and then uh, the other exorcists go to attack, and Gintoki's like, hey, why don't you go fight them, Shikigami person? And then uh, Gintoki realizes that the Shikigami is hiding inside of his kimono instead of fighting. Uh, but then another exorcist appears and says, oh, you're, you're friends with Crystal, who's the weather girl, uh, so I'll, I'll help you out. And the the one that saves them is of course uh, Saime, who is the the best known as kind of like the best comparison is probably like a Japanese version of Merlin. He is one of the most famous. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna try my best on it. I'm pretty sure it's on Miyoji. He's one of the most famous ones out there to the point where when he showed up because of Fate Grand Order, I immediately knew Domin must be behind him. <laughs> Because I immediately saw him and said, I bet that fucker Domin is here. And then the next episode has Domin. That's funny. It is. So, yeah, let's talk about this episode. I'll say what I liked about it. So, first thing first, actually, there's a lot of accidental fate references and then an actual real one. So, the one who's playing uh, the voice actress for uh, Getamaru is actually the same voice actress for Saber from Fate Stay Night. Um, which is really funny if you know anything about Face Day Night, she says master a whole bunch, and that was the reason why I was able to be like, why does that sound so familiar to me? <laughs> it's because it's literally, I've heard that her say those words so many times over the years, so I thought that was pretty cool that there was a, similar to Orochimaru's VA when, uh, for, um, Atose, I was very much like, holy shit, it's <laughs> this one, I had no idea that they were here. That was pretty cool. 
Uh, Getamaru is a kind of reference to another. She Getamaru makes uh, says that on her entrance that she comes from Mount U. So um, Ibaraki Doji is an oni from Mount Ui, and before they were like. Forgive me, I don't know how to actually pronounce the mountain name. I'm just going to go with Ui. Um, but, but her human name before, or like her childhood name before they became um, Ibaraki Doji was uh, Getamaru. So I thought it was a pretty nice little reference there to it. I don't think they're one and the same. But I did see that they were uh, related. And they were active at the same time as Seimei was in the specific, um, or Saimai, the same, in the same they were in like the same time period it's really weird a lot of the stuff that kind of comes back there's like oh yeah they were technically kicking it at the same time <laughs> but either way a lot of references that i had put down on my notes that i unfortunately did not save because i was dealing with work last night and it got very bad and i did not save it yes that is unfortunate i'm very unfortunate i had so much cool background for it because like holy shit there's so much stuff here that i actually legitimately know and i was like god damn it when i <laughs> went to look for it a couple minutes ago and saw that it was missing <laughs> But anyway, besides that, uh, obviously that bit there with the domestic violence when she shows up and it's a picture of her mom. <laughs> and she's like, I, they're like, I don't really feel like, you know, giving her orders. It's going to be kind of hard to fight when you're holding it. He's like, can you put the picture on the ground? He's like, I would never put my mother on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it gets so far that the Oni are like, here, let me take the picture. There's also a really funny bit that after she's been stabbed. The Oni tells Gintoki, summon her, summon her so we can heal her. He's like, now they're actually wanting to legitimately help her. So they ask well, Lee. Well, I think, didn't they? Because I, I think that uh, but they finally got the, the quote-unquote Shikigami on the line. And they're like, hey, shit's getting really bad. We need you to get your mom and get out of here right now. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what like, they said. And run. Yeah, bring your mom because they want to heal her because the Onis are like saying they're the demons are like no we we can heal her it's okay we can save this we're <laughs> we're gonna make this through <laughs> and then she's just up and she's fucking dead and then with the the twist is, is when they're like oh what about your mom was like what my mom she died a thousand years ago and then with the with the photos on the ground she fucking stomps on it <laughs> yeah she walks on it really funny it might be one of my favorite character introductions ever it was so fucking funny especially how long they last on just like the still image of Gintoki holding the little uh paper of him like some being able to summon the shikigami and he's just like yes it like goes on for an extremely long period of time <laughs> really well done though um, I liked a lot of the stuff at the beginning. Obviously, Gintoki being like super enamored with the weather lady has always been really funny. Um, cause it's like the only, he treats a lot of women with respect, but he doesn't treat a lot of women in a way that's like, oh yeah, I want them in some kind of way. But for this one, he actually does. And it's super funny cause he's unable to like play cool at all. <laughs> When he's like, when they're saying like, obviously we can give her something better than uh, Milo to drink or Milo to drink. And then she's like, oh, I love this Milo. It's like, oh, you love the Milo? I actually have an ancient 60 year old Milo that we can crack <laughs> up in and drink. <laughs> it was really funny. The way that when he enters it, he's like, uh, please don't. Uh, uh, Ginsan is dead. You can call me. I think he says Kancho, but it's like president. Please call me president from now on. It's like, I'm sorry that all my other workers are currently out on the field. I am only left with, like, the layabouts. <laughs> Those are the only ones currently available to me. <laughs> and it's so funny because when he's, like, doing the whole bit with the shutters and he's, like, trying to be give, like, his Gintoki-like speech. And uh, Shinpachi is like, president, <laughs> there's no blinds there. <laughs> and he just completely ignores them. Super funny. Um, and I like the kind of starting up bits here of the crystal as she's like, talks about like, uh, you start to see some of the ab abuse that she starts to get through because of how wrong she is with all her predictions. And it kind of starts to play off a little bit more, um, in the upcoming episodes, but I thought it was a very good start of the arc. It made me, I think this is the one, one of the ones that has caught me on the most. It might be just because there were so many references to it that I like, <laughs> understood and this is like weirdly enough a, a part of ancient history of japan that i actually know a lot about because of fake grand order so i was actually like sitting back like oh that's really cool and then it also helped that a lot of it was also pretty funny and i like seeing a uh, gintoki ad act completely different than what you would expect him to when it comes to a lady which is pretty funny so i liked it how do you feel zen 
yeah, I thought it was good. It, it was definitely one of the first because a lot of times when they have these arcs that like become emotional toward the end in the beginning, you're like, this is not funny, and then it ends up getting good. Um, this one was funny the whole time. The 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 long ass domestic violence outbreak over the speakerphone had me laughing. Fucking, <laughs> I was dying, man. It was really the only good. thing that was missing was someone actually saying domestic violence like they used to. <laughs> That that would have driven it over the. That's when we needed <laughs> the, the ultimate. That's exactly what I needed. No, that was that shit was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like when they're appalled at the Shikigami showing up, and they're like, "Oh my god, she's in mourning for her dead mother." <laughs> <laughs> killing me. Um, but no, it was it was good. It was, yeah. it was good stuff. I also like the twist when they show when the when the demon actually first comes out and she fights it back and it turns like it almost turns into like a there's a moment where they like they think like it's gonna be like one of those like oh man she's someone that we need to talk about and you think it's gonna go one completely different way and then she that demon shows up and she like does like a bunch of fucking magic and instantly destroys it she's like that's what you're gonna be fighting is that gonna be okay and then Shinpachi is immediately like no that's not okay would you get Gitoki what the fuck are you thinking. <laughs> This is so above our pay grade, it's not even funny. We are not built for this. We should not be doing this. And then his response is like, eh, you know, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> because of who it yeah, is. Yeah, it'll work out. Yeah, you know, it's fine, it's fine. It's like, um, but the thing that she, the thing that's most about you, because like, your current plan is to just like, go into the people that are some of the most highest uh, exorcism, exorcists in all of Japan and just like, walk into their... <laughs> domain it's like eh, it's fine it's fine we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out it's like completely different from how he usually handles stuff where he's like willing to be like eh, it's fine we don't need to do this he's like no no we we need to do this <laughs> we're doing this so real good and let's go on to the next episode which is episode 196 not losing to the wind go ahead zen so, uh, Sammy appears, and all of the other exorcists are like, oh, okay, we're, we're gonna back off, uh, and they kind of go in and start talking, and they're like, oh, you know, Crystal hired us to do all this stuff, um, and then the weather report comes on, and they're like, oh, we gotta record it, and then they can't find any DVDs, <laughs> <I'm> like, shit, <laughs> uh, and then they go to Spider-Man. go make, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they go to go make the, uh, weather report come true, but then another spell is cast to counter the weather because there's an evil rival clan that hates them. Uh, that is her her ex husband. Uh, she was married off to their clan, the the Sharinos, mm-hmm. to like garner peace between the two. Uh, but then he went and uh, broke the marriage because she got ill, and he wanted to go and like save her from it and all. Um. Then eventually the uh, Ketsuno spell fails and the other group's spell wins and causes it to rain. And then Doman reveals himself and is like, ah, we're, we're in- intentionally making all of her weather predictions <laughs> fail. Um, and then they uh, kind of talk to the um, little girl, the little ghost girl some more, the, the Shikigami. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, I uh, I don't really give a shit about any of this. I don't really like this clan because they like forcibly bound me to servitude or whatever. But um, Crystal is the one who was nice to me. She was like my friend instead of a, a of a, like a master. So I I want to help her. And so um, they're like, okay, we're that you know I I, I like that reasoning. Then we see um, the weather report going, and then Gintoki's watching it, and he's like, "I'm surprised you can you can watch this report when you know she's getting shit on by everybody." And he's like, "Isn't that our uh, our our duty to to uh, watch as she's struggling through this difficulty?" And I think he starts calling him Big Brother. He does. <laughs> he like, Don't call me that. Um. And then there's a. A challenge from from Doman to have what I I don't remember if they name the challenge right here or if it's in the next episode. Oh, it's in. It. I wrote it in my notes. <laughs> it's uh, the the Shikigami tag team wrestling match. Yeah, the the, the, the 
Yes, the da- tag team death match. There's like a mystical. I think there's like the word mystical in it. I think somewhere in there. Yeah. No, I I think it is this one because Gintoki's like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do that, and then the Shikigami's like, you'll you'll die, and uh, and Gintoki's like, we're I'm going, I'm going anyway because I can't, I don't want to watch her cry, and then the Shikigami's like, you know what? I'm going with you, Master Gintoki. And Gintoki goes, don't call me Master, <laughs> call me President. <laughs> It is, yeah, it is this one, then. Yeah, and so they run off, and then Kagura and Shinpachi are behind them, and Shinpachi's like, Kagura, I think this is a really bad idea. We don't have powers. <laughs> and Kagura's like, you're sweating you're sweating too much small stuff, little man. You let me handle that. And Shinpachi's like, what do you mean by that? And then Kagura just gives him, like, a look. And then uh, we see that Seimei uh, went, even though the Shikigami person was like, um Doman is definitely too strong for him now because he has all of his powers like spread across the city to protect it with all those different um familiars and stuff and if he maybe consolidated them all he might be strong enough but he won't do that because it would leave the city unprotected and it, his duty won't allow him to do that so he's going to go there and then he's going to die um Doman grabs him and starts like giving him a bunch of shit but then the Shikigami appears and they all arrive um and Gintoki's wearing one of the outfits and Kagura's wearing like a shrine maiden outfit. And then <laughs> I don't know why Shibachi's dressed as all I could think of was like Devil Man from Dragon Ball. <laughs> Dude, I was thinking but, I was like I was thinking, what the fuck is El Chapulin Colorado doing here? <laughs> he was like a yeah. If you ever seen a uh, a Chapulin, he's like a Mexican superhero, <laughs> and he reminded me a lot like him, except for instead of red, he's wearing all black. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, uh, and he's he's there supposedly like he's posing as a Shikigami, so that they can join the Shikigami tag team Mystic Death Match. Yeah, and that's where this episode ends. So to begin, the stuff I liked, I liked that I was able to correctly predict that Domen is going to show up. Uh, in the actual history behind Seimei and Domen, so mid they are rivals to each other with. Uh, there's like a bunch of stories of like <laughs> Doman getting shit on by Seimei. <laughs> There's like a an untold amount of them where he was like, "Oh yeah, I got this uh, box and I made one of my attendants put five oranges and I've correctly defined there are five oranges." And then Seimei turned them into rats and said, "Actually, there's five rats." And then they opened it up and he just got attacked by a bunch of fucking rats. <laughs> like it. <laughs> so that's always been like a rivalry is that Seimei is just so much better than Doman. So it was actually kind of interesting to see a situation where Seimei is actually much weaker than him. Um, and it kind of gets revealed why. You said, like you said here, that he's holding back a lot of his Shikigami at the moment um, to kind of take place over the city. And you, we got to kind of see a, maybe a little bit more powerful version down the line. But either way, I like that. I like that at the beginning because Gintoki originally came here to question them because he assumed that someone in the clan had bad blood over it due to the divorce. Um, and then when they immediately flip the switch and see that, um, <laughs> actually they're super supportive of them, and then Shibachi's like, Kentucky, I don't think that it's them. Actually, it looks like they're super behind everything that she's doing. And then he goes like, Kagura goes like, he can't hear you, he's actually joining in on them. And he's like, perfectly <laughs> in there helping them make it sun. He's like in there screaming with them, he's like, how did you fit in so well? <laughs> you literally just came in. But yeah, the them getting overpowered. I also like that bit there where they're like, he's like, well, you have to record it. It's like, we don't, we have, don't have any space. We were using the, we were recording Spider Man. It's like, oh no, you have to read. Because like, what? He's like, I think it was Spider Man and one other series. I couldn't remember what the other one was, but I remember Spider Man. And he's like, tape over Spider Man. Just, you, just any part where that annoying bitch shows up. In Spider Man, <laughs> re record it with her. <laughs> Which is really funny. I was like, God damn, did Mary, was Mary Jane really that bad in the movie? I don't remember. Um, which was really funny. Um, when he gets, uh, I like the the backstory about the wedding because I remember when she got married and I remember taking note of it so long ago. And I was actually kind of cool to see it come back up. It's like, I, that's right, she did get married and she did get divorced. It was kind of cool to have that be a thing that happened so many ep- so many episodes ago and then it's coming back up here now. 
uh, really cool. Um, uh, I like the bit where Getamaru's talking about, like, yeah, I don't give a shit about what you, what happens to this clan. Like, they, they could all die for all I care, but, um, she was the only one that actually treated me like a person, so I see her as a friend, and she's also been the person, she's also been holding back information from getting to her, um, because she knows that if, um, she ever heard that, um, Seimei basically does this every single day, and he's been doing it every single day, to try and make it so that it went away, and she knew that the c problem was technically caused by her, because it is due to the divorce, that she would probably, um throw herself at Doman just to get it to stop. Uh, and I get, like, that moment where he talks about, like, yeah, I'll probably, um, lose or do something like that, but I would rather... It's like, it's like yeah, there'll be, like, a rain of blood. He's like, that's no different from the rain. Like, a, uh, the rain dropping down, blood rain dropping down. I can handle all that. I don't... I refuse to handle uh, seeing a girl cry, basically. And that was enough for her to be like, I now consider you my second master. Let's fucking go. That was, a, <laughs> you did the cool speech thing. Let's go. Um, there's also the bit where after they fail to stop the rain, um, when she's getting like shit thrown at her, I think he, uh, Same actually says like, how can you watch that? He's like, I'm kind of a sadist. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm a bit of a sadist i'm a bit of a sadist but then he then mentions is like it's only right that we sit here and watch her go through it when she's trying so hard and same immediately drops down is like of course i'm it's partly responsible so i'll be doing the same and then he starts dropping a lot of like big brother bro bro like he says like so many of them. he's like stop calling me bro bro and then eventually gets to the point where he's like calling him like ro ro he's like what the hell is ro ro <laughs> I don't know what you're saying anymore. It, like, that's how far the Big Brother thing is. He calls him, like, Nut Bro or something yeah. at one point. He's like, Nut Bro, don't call me that. Like, it's really weird. Yeah, he's like, why would you call me that? He's like, you you seem too willing to already join the family. He's like, I I think he even says later on, he's like, after I marry your sister. He's like, who says that I even approve your marriage? Um... Which is really good. Uh, like I said, anytime it's very for some reason it's very funny because he usually treats it so uh, casual when it comes to women, but for this one specific one, he can't hold himself back at all. Uh, and yeah, I really liked it when they showed up to kind of save the day, and uh, the Shinpachi being dressed up as uh, Shikigami as well, which will play which plays heavily into the next episode, but. For now, that's what I liked about this episode. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, I like a lot of the same stuff about it. I thought it was really funny that Shipachi is the Shikigami, even though he's the least combat capable <laughs> of everyone on the team. Uh, <laughs> it really probably should have been Kagura, but F she's funny. dressed up as a shrine maid. Yeah, I was actually thinking in the next episode, if Kagura had actually been the, the demon, she would have instantly eaten that thing. <laughs> and there would have yes, been no issue. <laughs> no questions asked. <laughs> But it is funny to see him uh, dressed up as that because he is the weakest one. <laughs> yeah, by far the weakest one. Um, it's it's just a funny episode, and I like the uh, you know the stereotypical like it's Gintoki speech time. But as always, they always hit pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they do. That they do. And now let's go on to episode 197. This, the the last episode, uh, god damn it, I wish I remembered the name of the thing. The panda, the panda, fuck, I'm not gonna be able, the panda, pandemonium con? Is that pandemonium, what it is? Pandemonium, yeah. The pandemonium, the last episode, or next episode on ends with them going, pandemonium? Like, pandemonium is like, it's like a really weird, just nonstop saying pandemonium, 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 as they show nothing but the loving shots between Shimpachi and the pandemonium. So, episode 197, not losing to the storm. Go ahead, Zen. So, the, the tag team competition begins. Um, they, the, the other team summons a demon, and Shimpachi's like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this. <laughs> And then uh, they're like, hey, Shimpachi, good luck, buddy. And he's like, I'm not doing this. And then the guy goes, all right, would anyone like to give up? And Shimpachi immediately goes to give up, and Kagura <laughs> stops him. Um, and they're like, all right, the first round is going to be uh, the Shikigami has to eat uh, this thing called a pandemonium, which is like this really nasty-looking bug. Um, and Shimpachi's like, I, I'm not going to eat that. That's disgusting. And eventually, Kagura, like, 
keeps pushing him up there until he goes to do it, and he, he like, kisses it, and they both realize it's their first kiss. And so the gross-looking bug's head turns into, like, a pretty girl's face. <laughs> and there's, like, a whole love story that plays out with them. And they're, like, uh, like uh, the whole background turns pink. And there's, like, sparkly, like, you know, Japanese, like, love symbols everywhere. And the pandemonium's, like, it's okay. If it means that you can win, you can eat me. And he's, like, no, your kindness is too much. I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, and he's like falling in love with the the bug because it was his first kiss. Um, and uh, then Kagura is like, "Fuck it!" And she kicks the um, the pandemonium. She kicks their pandemonium into the enemy's mouth. And then uh, Shimpanch is like, "What did you do? <laughs> Where's the pandemonium? What have you done?" Uh, and then the other team wins. Uh, it looks like they win. Like legitimately, oh right, yeah, that's right. It looks like they win, but then it then it throws up, right? Yeah, she beats the shit out of it <laughs> to make it throw and up. It makes it vomit, yeah. Um, and so it's a tie, and Shimpachi's like devastated. Uh, <laughs> but then they the the Shikigami tricks him into thinking like that that her soul is with him or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. And then uh, they they go to have the next round, which is the tag team wrestling match. Um, and then Doman goes in, and uh, Gintoki doesn't like because they're supposed to get to summon a Shikigami or whatever. But then Gintoki just starts beating the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts beating his ass, uh, and he's just like on top of him, punching him in the face over and over again. Um, he reaches over to tag his teammate because it's literally like a tag team wrestling match. Uh, and then Getamaru jumps in and like stomps on his hand. And she's like, oh no, I stepped in shit. They're totally um, healing it up, which is so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Gintoki uh, picks up Doman and like jumps in the air. And they, I forget what they named the attack. It's something like the, uh, the ass breaker or the something. The ass buster, because it's uh, similar to the, the Kaniku buster, buster, but with ass <laughs> based. Yeah. And uh, he swings it down right as, or he swings Doman down right as Getamaru shoves the club up in the air, and it uh, <clears throat> hits him in the ass. But then it turns out that it was all like not real. And then Gintoki uh, gets his balls like knocked out of him. Yeah, because when and he was doing like, the buster, he landed on it yeah. directly on it, so his balls and it's retracted <laughs> inside himself. <laughs> and then. Uh, they they go to tag out, or Doman Doman tags out, and then Gintoki's like, "Get him out! I need you to knock my balls back out of me." But then she hits him too hard, and so his his balls like come out off his body completely. Uh, and then the same, he's like, "I'll fix it." And then Doman tries to stop him, and so they each have one of Gintoki's balls <laughs> as like weapons. That they're controlling, like almost like Yamcha's spirit ball and Dragon yep. Ball, they're like swinging <laughs> them around, and they like keep hitting each other. And Gintoki's like running around trying to ask his balls to stop fighting one another. I forget the example that he uses, but he's like telling a story, and he's like, "Those two got along. Why can't you? <laughs> You're twin um, brothers. Why can't you? <laughs> yeah, why can't you just get along?" Um, eventually his balls get crushed and he blacks out. Um. And then Gintoki is getting healed while Seimei fights in there. Um, and he, he beats the nameless tag team partner because Doman just had like some kind of filler guy in there fighting with him. That just was, that was nobody really. Um, and then Seimei is like, all right, Doman, you and me, let's go. And then it ends there. Yeah. The the way he does it is really cool too because he they assume that the only shikigami that he can summon, he does it to heal Kentoki's balls. Um so when he goes to go for the sword, he stops it with a single hand and he like completely shatters it and then he shoots it back and then Doman's like, "Wait a minute, you did it." And then he's like, "Oh yeah, I've recalled all of them." <laughs> I got back all my Shikigami that were protecting the city. Your ass is dead on this one. And that's where it, uh, where it kind of ends. I think they talk about more about what he did in the next one, but uh, still really cool moment from it. 
Uh, this episode, man, I think it's at the beginning of, I think at the end of the last one, I think they call the thing that they're doing, they just, like, drop all pretense and say, like, oh, yeah, we're here for the Tenkaichi Budokai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're here for that, and I forget, I think Seimei says, like, when Gintoki says, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the team, bro, it's like, if <laughs> I would rather serve you up to Piccolo or Krillin, like, <laughs> than to have you on my team. Um... When Shinpachi's fighting it, the not fighting it, when he's trying to eat the pandemonium and he accidentally kisses it and it turns into like a full on like first like love scene, which is really funny because the pandemonium, the only thing that you could say kind of looks okay on it is actually the giant full lips that it has. <laughs> if you just saw the lips <laughs> and saw nothing else, you'd be like, all right, that's all right. But then you see the full thing and you're like, oh god, no. But it was really funny how he started hallucinating. He like took it away and had like had like an anime girl face on it. And it was also really funny as he was trying to go for it because he starts acting coy. Like he brushes up his little antenna against it and she goes like, ah! And he goes like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. He's like, I hope that didn't touch you in any weird place. He's like, no, just my chest. And he goes like, her chest? <laughs> like it's a fucking... <laughs> it's really funny to get this hyper aggro for a fucking bug of all things. But yeah, he's definitely, he's like having an inner monologue. He's like, why is that making my heart go so crazy? Like, I, I feel, I'm really feeling this moment. And then they have Kagura in the back in, background going like, really? Are you serious? Eat the fucking thing already. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> and so it's really funny when finally she kicks it and it enters the other dude's mouth. And then she beats the shit out of the Shikigami, which is really funny because Saibe is like going like, after she's done with it, he's like, I had no idea that you could resort to such levels of violence against the Shikigami. <laughs> Because he was really surprised that she just started whooping its ass out of nowhere. Um, but when she makes it throw up, she's like, I don't know which one was ours. Shimpachi each eat one of them. And he's just like, no. He's like, he got disqualified. And then when he's at the gravesite, as they're like going like, I guess the, we got disqualified for that. When they show him at the gravesite that he's built for it, he puts like a cross. <laughs> and it's also really funny how uh, Genomaru is throwing her voice to trick him into thinking that the spirit is like okay with him living on in his life. Like, never forget that I loved you or something like that. It's really good. And yeah, that moment where Gintoki fucking catches Domin and just immediately starts punching the shit out of him was, was so, so funny. funny. When he comes in and just grabs him and starts whooping his ass he's, in the middle of the thing. He does. And then when um, Getamaru is holding him, holding him back, he's like, I heard that you were married. Like, to the <laughs> to, <laughs> to her. Does that mean you were doing all kinds of weather reporting? And he does, like, the thousand years of death. And he just, like, fucking goes in on his ass over and over and over and over again. <laughs> like, he keeps shoving his fingers up his ass. Um, and then when he goes for the ass buster, he actually gets hit by it. But then he switches it and he goes, like, haha, that was just one of my duplicates. Which made me go, like, oh, that makes sense. Because in uh, Fago, Doman had a lot of duplicates and he was actually very annoying to fight. And then they show the back shot of his ass and he's bleeding out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, like, you really did get hurt by all that, didn't you? He's like, no, that's just my extreme hemorrhoids acting up. <laughs> Do you want me to show you my hemorrhoid infected ass to see that I'm not lying? <laughs> this is really funny. And then at the same time, Kitoki's on the floor talking about his balls. And then when his balls come out, the, some fantastic acting is always from Kentucky's VA as like his voice gets more and more shrill as time goes on and his balls are fucking deflating up in, inside the air. As they're, like, fighting against each other. There's also some really good sound effect. Because it actually does kind of sound like two balls slapping against each other. When they start fighting <laughs> with them. Uh, really good. Oh my god. It was so funny. Um, I loved basically every bit of it. <laughs> the, I, think, I think it's in this one that they start saying when some of the spells start going off. It's like, I think we're going really DBZ on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, it really comes into play later on when they go... This is maybe the most DBZ arc that we've had so far. Because <laughs> I think in the next one, Domin and him start having an actual DBZ uh, energy blast. And they say, like, wow, it really is actually just DBZ. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, I loved it. Um, How do you feel, Zen? Uh, very funny. Very good. 
I really enjoyed pretty much the whole thing. I can't think of anything that I didn't like. Um, I think Doman is very funny. I think all of it is... Uh, I, I, all of it was funny. The whole thing was funny. Yeah. Gintoki, like, wandering around the ring, begging his balls to stop fighting each other was <laughs> funny. <laughs> Gintoki is the only Shonen Jump okay. MC that has to deal with genitalia combat at any given point. He goes for so much... <laughs> He never gets a break. He never um, his his dick disappears. It gets turned into a wrench. His balls are made to fight each other in magical battle. There's really no end to them. So <laughs> funny. Um, uh, yeah, the whole th- the whole thing was really funny. Uh, the the cool bits were like, eh, it was all right, but the the comedy was better for me in this one than the the actual yeah. uh, fighting. Yeah, yeah. F- funny enough, the way it kind of comes out, because we're both big DBZ. Fan- well, you're you're a big fan of, of original the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball yes, Z. Yes, Dragon Ball and Z, I like very much. Yes. yes, yes, and and I think some parts of Super when it was airing originally, <laughs> you were yes. a fan of that. So we're both really for it. But I'm kind of with you on this one. I think some of the later ones were better in some of the future episodes. But for this one, it really was just a lot of the comedy and a lot of like the. The pure violence, <laughs> hilarious violence for it. Really good use of violence <laughs> to drive home. Yeah, there, there's such a thing as like poorly done comedic violence, and this was not it. This was extremely funny. Yes, the way that he just starts bleeding out his ass, it is a immediate <laughs> response is, do you want to see my hemorrhoid infected ass to see that I'm not lying to you? <laughs> and everyone <laughs> is just like not believing him. <laughs> This is really good. This might actually legitimately be the only version of Doman that I actually like. Because I hate the fake Grand Order version of Doman with a passion. But the Gintama version I actually really do like as a character. So let's move on to episode 198. Never losing that smile. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 198, the... uh... The rain is like uh, continuing, and you know, because again, they're they're making her predictions wrong on purpose to like ruin her credibility, I guess, to make people uh, to make her quit, basically, in revenge for for everything. Um, Seime is kind of beating Doman's ass, um, and then Doman is remembering the old. Like myth of where his ancestors and Seimei's ancestors ended up, uh, like turning on each other over a princess. Basically, it's basically the same thing that's happening now. Is what happened back then that they were like killing each other over a woman. Um, and then he and Seimei were childhood friends, but then the dad was like, "You're friends with those fuckers. Like, how dare you? Uh, like, you don't you don't get anything. Are you just gonna?" you know, forgive them for everything they've done to our family and all that stuff, and he, like, uh, abuses him, etc. Um, and then he, like, remembers after Sammy keeps beating his ass that Crystal shows up and gives him, uh, like, a, I don't remember what she gives him. It's like, I think it's, it's like a Band-Aid box or something. It, it's, I think it's wipes, because she also uses this when she's on her time of the month. <laughs> Oh and he, yeah, and then he also gives to her. He, yeah, that makes sense because he's all bloody because he's got his ass beat. Yep. So that makes sense. Um. And then uh, as he's like having these memories, his tattoo that was like the symbol of him going to the Forbidden Arts uh, starts to grow and cover his whole body, and then he gets possessed by the demon that his, the families had sealed away uh, all those years ago. Uh, and starts like uh, lashing out and beating everybody. Um, Same loses to him, and Gintoki picks up his sword. Um, Kagura jumps up to try to help, and she's like grabbing onto his arm, and he's getting like la- like thrashed around all over the place. Um, Same is like, you know, you can you can kill me if you need to kill me or whatever. Um, but remember that you genuinely did love my sister. Um, and then the demon fully takes control, but at the last minute, Gintoki jumps in and protects him by blocking the attack. And then uh, his his sword has like a Super Saiyan aura around it, like the, the wooden sword. 
Yep. And also, funny enough, in the previous episode, that's how his balls were glowing. Yeah, they were gold and, like, golden. shining. Yep, gold and shining. But now this is where we say it's going full DBZ <laughs> with the shining auras and everything. Um, this is another episode that I really liked. Um, I really like the the backstory that they had here about the ancient demon, about how it actually used to always rain, and it took the two brothers working together to finally get the rain to stop, but then the rain continued ad- again one day because he realized that um, the younger brother who killed his older brother because of the... Um, because of it, because he felt he was inferior to his older brother, and also his older brother was end up able to get with the princess that he couldn't get. Um, as he grew older, he realized that his resentment had basically made it so that the demon was able to come back, and that was held back again when he got killed by the son of his uh, brother. And it started like this never-ending cycle of violence between the two clans. That seemed like it would never end because, uh, like it said with his father, his father refused to let him. He wanted to end the beef that they had and work together with Sam A. But it just didn't work out that way because his father was like saying that you don't understand our grudge. You don't understand the history here of how much it means to us that you continue fighting on. Because there's just too much bad blood between us at this point and we need to keep going on. So he actually does, um, his father, like, threatens to, like, leave him and say, like, either you're with him or you're with me. It's one or the other, and he ends up choosing his dad because he is a kid, and so he's gonna pick his dad over a friend. But you can see him kind of go through his life as constantly, similar to the younger brother, uh, the younger brother did, where he was constantly just looked down, saying, like, yeah, it kind of, you know, it would be really good if we get that clan, but they got same A, and he's just so good. And we got Doman, and Doman fucking sucks. Is like the way that they're kind of saying it, and that is enough to just grow his resentment. And he thinks that maybe it'll same A eventually realizes what's going on as well, and he's like, "I really thought that the marriage would save it, and I only made things worse because I actually I'm really good at fighting Shikigamis, but I'm really shitty at making up with a friend." And he was never able to figure out how to do it. And then also, like, while this is all going on, the weather lady herself is going through a lot of, like, terrible times. And we keep seeing her occasionally as she, like, keeps saying, like, oh, it's going to be sunny tomorrow. And she keeps saying that every single time and she keeps getting more shit thrown at her. Um, and then the storm really picks up when the the demon comes out and starts going crazy. And I think the next episode they show a little bit more of that. So I'll talk about more about things related to that when we get there but yeah i uh i also liked when same was going fully serious when he says like basically i recalled them all and he's like that's crazy you're basically because we work for the uh bakufo i forget how to pronounce it um you recalling them is basically your there's no way for you to avoid the consequences of that you're going to be removed from your head of the head guardianship he's like it's okay this is worth it and he goes like full superpower. This is the version of Sammy that I was used to seeing where it's like, oh yeah, this guy is so crazy powerful that <laughs> literally not he shouldn't be losing to Doman under any circumstances. And you see that here. Doman says like, I have like 164 seals and he counters with, I have over a thousand. And he just uh-huh. like <laughs> completely fucking devastates them and he hits them with the fucking Bardock fire that he's <laughs> overwhelmed by it like completely. <laughs> Um, and similar to Bardock, he actually has that flashback where he's thinking back on it. The only difference is that he sees, um, himself constantly being, uh, offered wipes by the one sunshine in his life, which was his sister. And that's enough for the, the demon to wake up. It's also really funny that when he's waking up, he's like, is that really all you ever gave me? <laughs> and then, and then the demon wakes up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's the bit where they're, the same as healer wants to go and help him, but Getamaru says, like, you need to help this guy. Um, and because he's a, he, his role to play is not to be going it. And then it's really funny because the familiar goes, what's this ballless samurai going to do? <laughs> <laughs> and she goes like, he may have no balls. Uh, but the one thing you can't break from him is his spirit. And then he starts getting up. He's like, I feel that the left ball is coming back to me. I have one ball. That's enough for balance. And I think I can go fight. And he goes to go fight with a single ball. (laughs) 
That's maybe my favorite part is that when he's getting up, he's like, my right one isn't fully healed. I got my left one, though. That's enough for balance. As if if you lose your balls completely, that's actually what was stopping him from ever moving. Is that he lost his yeah, balance he completely. Walk anymore. It's like a tail. Yep. Uh, like Goku when he loses a tail. If Kentucky <laughs> loses his ball, <laughs> he loses the ability to walk. <laughs> really funny. I also forget, there is a scene, I think, in the previous one when they say when he loses his balls, there's a clear deflating that happens in his <laughs> groin area. <laughs> and I think they show it here to say, like, okay, there's a slight regrowing to show that one is back. <laughs> Which is really good. And, of course, when he comes in to save the day with the fucking Super Saiyan sword, really cool looking. And, yeah, really liked it, and a really cool episode. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, really cool. Uh, I like when the storm is picking up. Um, I like the the bit about the they're like past there where the you know they're basically everyone's like this guy's the best, but then you know he's kind of like I I'm really good at this one thing that everyone appreciates me for, but I'm kind of shitty at a lot of other things mm -hmm. uh, that just don't matter because people aren't looking at that because it's not my job. Um, it was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah, very funny the similarities between um, the current arc that we talked about in uh, Kuroko between the <laughs> generation of miracles when someone is so good at what they do it makes the people who are still good look that much worse. Yeah, it's like, it's... like when you're when you're generational that you know you can have other people who are really good but it just doesn't matter because you don't compare. Yeah, and so it leaves you off of a a bitter feeling a little bit. It can, at least, in this case. All right, let's end the arc now. Episode 199. That's how I wish to be. Beautiful and strong. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, they are... I guess Gintoki is now fighting the demon, uh, and he's got the Super Saiyan sword, which is powered up with the, the magic from the... Uh, from from Getamaru and the other Shikigami on their team, mm -hmm. um, they're they're fighting off the the big demon. Um, Kintoki hits him and let, let hard enough to let him kind of take over mentally for a little bit. It's basically the "you got to kill me" moment, you know. Um, they cast all of their spells to keep powering up Kintoki's sword. Um, and Doman's like, I, I need you to protect, you know, to, to protect the city and everything. Um, the rainstorm, because the demon is, like, rampaging, has become, like, a full-on hurricane. Um, and there's a really funny scene where, like, people keep getting blown away off of progressively harder things. Like, one guy's holding a tree, and the tree breaks, and he flies away. And then the next person's holding, like, a stone column. But that also breaks, and they fly away. <laughs> uh, and then... Um, the doors get blown off of Atose's place, and what's the robot girl's name? Is it Tama? Tama, yeah, it's Tama. She gets uh, blown out the door, and she's like clinging to the door, but the whole time all this is happening, Atose's like, everybody's overreacting over just a little hurricane. <laughs> this is some baby shit. And it's funny, because I think of like every old person ever who's like, whatever. It's just a little wither, who cares? While Tama and Catherine are like clinging to the door to not die. Yeah. Um, it's very funny. Uh they go and um attack the demon kind of all at once. I I think they I forget what they say, but it's like the same spell to like make it sunny. Um and it kills the demon and clears the weather. And then they kind of all are like, hey, let's not let's not feud anymore. Let's be Let's be friends, and they decide that they're going to do that, and they're going to work as a team. Um, Kentoki sneaks out and starts to leave, and Getamaru's like, "Hey, where are you going? We can't have a feast without the without the guest of honor." And Gintoki's like, "I'm, you know, I thought you didn't want her to know about this, and if we make a big deal about it, and then we like celebrate and everything, um, there's no way that she won't find out. So like, if we if I stay and we party and all this stuff, then all that's going to happen is that she's going to find out what happened." And she's gonna blame herself. And so she's like, uh, "Oh, you're you're working for free this whole time, even though you know you really like this girl, and you could tell her that you saved her, and you're not gonna." And he's like, "Nah, I'm just a fan anyway, but I'm not working for free." And he gives her one of those Japanese autograph boards, 
And he's like, get this autographed and uh, send it. Have her uh, send it to me after she does. And the the Shikigami's like, I'll get her to sign it. Gintoki love if it's the last <laughs> thing I ever do in this life. Um, and then uh, they show um, her giving another weather report that's accurate this time, and. Um, then we go to the ending, which is the, the you know the, it's the special ending that shows the uh, clips from the the mini arc, mm-hmm, and then it goes to like a full on commercial by um, <laughs> for the Penny Sakura arc again. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, here we go. <laughs> Get it. When I saw it, I said Zed has to talk about Penny Sakura one more time. <laughs> We're back in it, baby. It's Penny Sakura yet again. One more time. Um, and it's funny because it's playing the um, Bakshi Dancer song, which is the yep. theme song in the movie. And it's like, God damn, dude, they really want you to buy this fucking movie. They do. They do. It's really funny because the way they, they try and like uh, remember how the events went and they just keep fucking up the events. I like when they were like, yeah. Allies continue to fall. Insurance money is collected person <laughs> by person. Baby Zakura. I like the part where they talk about um, Katsura, where they just completely go like, oh yeah, Katsura went on like a wild bender and then he came back with short hair and apologizes. Like, that's exa- that's not what happened. <laughs> like, he did yeah, have I short hair. And then they, uh, they were making fun of, I think, One Piece because their movie 5 released with a, a manga zero. Like a volume zero, so all the things that you can read up for before the movie itself. <laughs> and they're like, you know what? The best way to prepare for Benny Zakura, we suggest you read Gintama, volume 10 and 11. <laughs> Literally telling you, go read the manga. <laughs> go, <laughs> go do that. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, it was funny to see it one last time. There's a part of me, I'm going to say it out here now, which uh, means that we're not going to do it, but it would have been funny. God damn it. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm cutting this off of the podcast. And... All right, we'll hold on to that. They just heard a bunch of dolphin noise. We're just saying, look forward to some future Shonen Archive stuff. <laughs> We've got plans. We got plans, baby. Unbelievable plans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> talking about this episode, I really liked it. It was, uh, I really liked the overall message, which is that the the storm that was being caused was caused by overall negativity, and as the negativity was reaching to its end point, um, they cut back to the weather lady, and she says like it's gonna. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be sunny tomorrow, and the reason is is because the rain has to stop eventually. Like the times like this are always here, and the best that you can do is kind of soldier through them and know that eventually it does end and there is light at the end of it. I thought that was a very nice way of like putting through it, especially after seeing her through the entire episodes. She smiled throughout all of it and dealt with all the bullshit that she had to deal with. That she says at the end, "No, listen." The days like this are unavoidable. They're always going to happen. But what you can do is that know that it's going to end eventually. Because the rain has to stop. And I thought it was a very, very nice moment. And it especially glows with the overall theme that they were going for here. The final fight was also very good. The way that Ansan Ansa Maru, which is the demon guy, he was being held back by Domen. And Domen has like his whole thing. Because in the previous episode, Seimei said that he was going to sacrifice himself. And then Domen fought back and said, like, you're going to sacrifice yourself? Please. I'm going to be doing the sacrificing around here, Sammy. I'm taking yeah, over. Like, I'm going to sacrifice myself. Yeah, get it right. Don't be a glory hog. I'm doing this. Uh, which I thought was really cool. I like the way that everyone was powering up Gintoki to max Super Saiyan levels. A thought of unheard of <laughs> before. Um, I like the final Super Saiyan attack when he blasted off in the giant sky beam into the air and it literally destroys the clouds and the, the sun returns to everything. Really well done. Um, I liked it when they were talking about like, oh yeah, the, the wall that we had created was blown away during the fight. So we're just gonna get rid of that and we're finally gonna have peace. We're gonna squash the beef. I think it's time. And even they say that while they're fighting, I think it was... 
I think it was Say May who told him, like, dudes, look at this. We all want to be here for the same thing, which is to save Doman or to stop this thing. We have to band together. Enough with the bullshit. We need to do our job. And they all agree. And when Doman is actually, it's revealed that he didn't die. The reason is, is that actually the, the wish that everyone had been making was not for them to beat him. It was for Doman to actually be saved, which I thought was actually a really nice way of actually beating the demon. It's that the demon wasn't defeated by the idea of like, no, we want to kill the demon. It was the idea of actually want to, we want to save him. So I thought it was a very like nice kind of way to overall talk about like the actual power of positivity. Like it's always really funny when it's like stuff like this, where it's like, you have to be positive. It has to be this way. Now go kill that fucker over there. <laughs> it kind of like yeah. blows. <laughs> yeah. it, it kind of blows it all out of the proportions when like your overall end message is like murder is okay. <laughs> and I understand it for the most part, but I actually did like it in here where they kind of sidestep it away by saying like technically it's a demon. Demons don't have to be killed. We didn't kill it. We saved you. That's what we actually wanted. It just so happened that the demon died as a result of it, which is pretty nice. When Doman comes back is also really good. I also like when they killed him, they finish the ass blasting because they also blast him in the ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going for the ultimate win here with the ass blasting. It's a full ass blast arc. Um, the bit where he asked for the autograph was really good. Uh, really like that. I really like that moment they had. I like when Doman showed up and he's like, Oh yeah, same as this. How you say treat your saver, treat your savior. Let me show you how my clan fucking <laughs> brings home, celebrates someone, and then same as shows up and he's like, yeah, nah, you ain't one upping me on this one. And he like releases like some doves and he makes it nice. And Doman's like, oh yeah, check this out. And he releases Oni into the sky <laughs> that you can see up into the air. <laughs> and then they start having like a battle between each other to see who can show the most gratitude between the two. <laughs> Yeah, where they're doing like the uh, the, they keep calling it like the magnificent, beautiful spell or whatever, like back and forth. Yeah, and screaming they, at each other. Yep, which is really good. And as they walk away, it's like, man, it really is a super beautiful sight, actually, <laughs> as you see it all. And I was like, oh <laughs> yeah, that it, that felt good. And of course, the Benny Zakra stuff at the end, <laughs> very funny. I don't know if it's just because now we know. It's probably because of the way that we watched it, where it, it just hits so much funnier. <laughs> how much, how much funnier it is seeing all the Benny Zakra stuff out of context. It's super good. It is super funny. I don't know why it, it always kills me whenever they bring it up. It's fucking it, hilarious. Dude. It is. It is super funny. Um, and really, I know, as always, I also like that ending bit when they do the ending song set to all the moments of the arc. And yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, how do you feel, Zen? Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was good all the way through. Uh, I am surprised we got an arc like this without someone having to die at the end. <laughs> Yeah, I was right? saying like, who's gonna be the who's gonna be the sudden death at the last minute? No, they do the they do the opposite. There's a sudden life at the end. <laughs> Doman yeah, lives. Yeah, they, it very look like it looked very much like oh, we're gonna have our our uh, obligatory, you know, Gintoki yep. or, or Gintama death here. But no, it, it worked out fine. Yeah, uh, <laughs> someone was actually rescued. Yeah, which never happens in mm -hmm. this. Yeah, very rarely. Very uh, rarely. Yeah, but no, it was uh, it was very good. I enjoyed all of it, and I liked the the little autograph bit at the end was very was very cute. Yeah, I I was actually kind of surprised how strong this arc ended up just being in general. Like I, it, it was not on my radar for seeing it other than saying like, oh yeah, this is an arc coming up. And then I was watching, I was like, god damn, that was just really good. <laughs> yeah, it was just really solid the whole time. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, man, that was. Dope. fucking dope loved it <laughs> especially after the the bullshit that i had to deal with with work as i was watching this all of it just kind of flowed away like when when i hit episode four that's when i sent you that message that said i may have may have been really angry <laughs> when i said only one of <laughs> we could only record get <laughs> dead get um previously i was in a super bad foul mood and this picked me up like immediately it was super well done good job Anya Gintama. 
And of course, it's time to talk about what are we going to talk about Gintama next week? Well, it's time because now we're finally done. Two hundred. That's right. Episode one, all the episode two hundred and one, completely done in the bag. It's finished. What's next to go for Gintama? You would think episode two hundred two, but that is not what's next. What's next is actually we're going to do a little mini thing, which is going to be focused on Yoriniku Gintama-san. Uh, which is very literally translated as the very best of Gintama, um, which is a high definition reruns of older episodes of Gintama, not in HD, not in full screen. Want to make that very clear? There's no difference between watching these and the others. Um, and the title itself is apparently a parody of a, a family show called Saze San, which is why they call him Gintama San on this one. Um, and we will talk about the OPs and EDs that played on on here, and then I think we will start actual next episode because i think there's only so much that we can go through i've been trying to find as much history as i can i'm asking my friend who was there when it was happening what what it, what was it like to just be like oh yeah here's episode 201 here's just a bunch of reruns now it's a very weird time in the gintama history that i wish was better documented but every time i've tried to look for more info on it it's always like the only thing I ever see is like, hey, should I watch Yuriniku Gintama-san? And then the answer is, just skip it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> but we yeah. will we will at the very least see these OPs and EDs and talk about them. Because we, I really like the OPs and EDs. And I think it's really weird that they made special OPs and EDs for these. Um, and I think we'll come back and we'll talk about episode 202 and 203, which is a little tiny arc called the Time Skip Arc. Which will probably, after we talk about all the things that kind of happen in between, um, we'll kind of explain maybe some of the weirdest things. Episode 202 happened in 2011, and episode 201 was in 2010. So there was a huge gap of just a year of not sure if actually Gintama's going to continue <laughs> in between all that, which is... Uh, yeah, that's crazy. It is. It is very crazy. And yeah, that's going to be there for next week. And then after that, we'll f start figuring out. We're going to enter some hyperdrive mode when it comes to um, Gintama. Because the next season is going to have a lot of episodes where it's going to be featured with uh, a lot of like putting together. We likely are going to have to see episodes 204 to 209. And then save the Kakabuchi 4 Divas arc, which is like its own special arc here there's like a lot of arcs in here that are um a lot of them they're featuring a lot of episodes and again really sad that this also features a crossover with sket dance which i'm going to be really curious to see it because i actually did see it back in the day because when i was watching sket dance when the crossover happened i immediately switched over to gintama to see what that episode was about um just to figure out what was going on and that was technically my first introduction to gintama stuff <laughs> um so yeah look forward to that i think there's some cool stuff going on and we're going to be ramping up pretty soon because some of these other arcs that are coming up later are really episode heavy so we'll likely lock them down in one go my cat is choking nice. in the background can you hear that i cannot <laughs> lucifer are you okay He's just sneezing. <laughs> he's not joking. All right. Well. <laughs> All right. He's looking at me like, please don't bring attention to this. It's bad enough you put me in your phone. Oh, we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> Can we move on, please? <laughs> the people don't need to know about my sneezing issues right now. So, yep, yeah, that's it for Gintama this week. And as always, now it's time to talk about where you can find more of us. If you want more Zen stuff, you can go over to Zen's channel where he'll do where he does Shonen and Chill, and he'll be talking about Shonen Jump. Uh, I'm no longer on Twitter, so I no longer get spoiled by Jujutsu Kaisen, <laughs> so it feels pretty <laughs> nice. It's, uh, actually, funny enough, I should be back by the time this episode released, but for a brief bit, so I can set it up and be like, here you go, because I kind of forgot that when I left, I was like, damn it, I didn't put the Shonen, <laughs> I didn't put the Shonen Archive episodes up, <laughs> so I didn't set that up in between, so I'll probably have to do that for Kuroko and do this, like, briefly return, not look at anything, and then leave again. <laughs> I need to finish Infinite Wealth before I can come back and be like, I'm here to be a normal person again. Because <laughs> I have a friend who's super yeah. into Yakuza, and he's already much higher up than me. Um, so I need to finish that quickly. 
and then probably also get on Persona 3 and hopefully finish that. Funny enough, Toast, uh, Toaster of Fun, a friend of me and Zen's, he actually po- sent me a Discord message saying, like, hey, man, watch out, <laughs> because there's uh, Persona 3 may remake stuff up on Twitter already. There's going to be leaks for it. And I said, it's okay, I'm o- I'm off of Twitter, actually. And then he said, based in all question marks. <laughs> <laughs> because toast is uh right, toast yeah toast famously left twitter and said this place sucks <laughs> he left many He's years ago wrong, he is sometimes no. you need something to do when you're taking a shit it's true that's the one thing that's kind of bad is like i just don't know what's going on with everyone i missed i don't even know if you're even doing family guy jujutsu kaisen jokes anymore that's how out of the loop i am oh i forgot to do that i need to do one yeah i sent out a one of my safe messages was the one thing i'll miss most are the <laughs> are the family guy jujutsu <laughs> oh, man, kaisen the problem is i peaked with hikari doing shapoopy so i don't know what to do after that <laughs> God damn it. You, that is really good. Yeah, it's okay. it was easily my peak one. <laughs> Just like Family Guy, you peaked at a certain point and you're going, damn it, what do I do now? Yeah, what do I do now? <laughs> oh, that's funny. And yeah, if you want to feature more stuff featuring me and occasionally my brother, there should be a summon video up for Fago pretty soon. Valentine's Day is coming up, so of course there's a lot of uh, lady banners coming out, and that means plenty of stuff for me to talk about. Oh yeah, um, and stuff to go for as well. I plan. I'm planning out a current video of trying to. I can say it here because not enough of my Fago people follow me on here, <laughs> but I can say I'm, I'm planning out a video trying to actually legitimately get to something to NP5. Um, which is getting five copies of a unit. Uh, the gotcha rates for SSRs are 1% on Fago. 1% in general or 1% for the feature? For, I think it's for 1% chance to get an SSR. And if it is an SSR, I think it's zero point. To get a featured, I forget. I didn't. I I had a friend of mine do the the math for me. But the point is, is that it takes a lot. Um, it's ass, basically. It, it is. It is rough. Sometimes it's not that rough because you know, gotcha fallacy. I guess sometimes that sometimes you just do a multi and you get the unit and then you go sweet yeah. and then you move on with your life uh, and you don't actually think about the overall numbing cost of what it actually costs to get that unit. Um, but I'm doing the calculations for it, and I said, if I actually want to do this experiment, and if I had zero quartz on me, and I wanted to buy all of it for a, mm, let's say a 70% chance of me getting NP5, I'm shelling out around $983. God damn. Yeah, and I looked at that price and said, this is going to require a lot more timing. <laughs> yeah. I looked at that and said, Jesus fucking Christ. There's not a lot of... There's plenty of whales out there for Fago, and there's plenty of people who do summon videos, but I don't feel there's enough people who actually, like, document the case of saying, I'm gonna go for this extremely stupid thing. I'm gonna I'm try chasing it. this one unit forever kind of thing? Yes. And this is the one unit that I care about as a character that I love because it's based off of Quetzalcoatl, uh, Cuckoo Lacan, and that is based off of... Uh, of Aztec, not Aztec, Mayan mythology. I mean, <laughs> if you ask Fago, the Japanese devs, that's a South American thing, even though we're it there in fucking North America, so what the fuck do I care if I get it slightly wrong? But the point is, it's a character that I care deeply about, so I'm willing to try and go for it. Um, and now I'm at a decent enough place in my life where I can actually, like, chart out my money and see, like, this is how it kind of go, and I also make okay enough amount of money occasionally on the youtube enough that the that the taxes want their cut that's for sure so <laughs> i planned out the video going okay i want to actually document this because i don't think i've ever seen a video actually talk about the pure unadulterated hurt that goes into this and i want to document it and show this is why you never do it never call me a whale because i'm never doing this again <laughs> I am not. Yeah. I am not about to detruth it every single fucking banner. That's not what I'm doing. I do. Yeah, I've, I've been just trying to decide that for my various games as well. I, I, I've decided for Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm really only going for Gojo's, Toji, mm-hmm. or Tsukuna. That's like it. Yeah. Pick, pick or your... Yuta's, but there's not going to be another Yuta for a year and a half, so I'm not worried about that. Yeah. 
And yeah. uh, when that game comes to NA, I will also approach it similar to Fago. Assuming that it's on a slight delay and I can plan out banners, I actually think that when that game, if it ever comes to NA, I'm pretty sure it is because it does fucking fantastic on JP. Um, yeah, it does gangbusters on JP. They'll just... It's doing so good on JP, they're making a PC client for it. Jesus Christ, that is fucking baller status, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're making a fucking... I know that's like a more common thing nowadays for, for gacha titles. Like, it's like, you know, Dokkan's obviously never going to get one, but like no. um, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis has a Steam. Like, you can get it on Steam. Um, and yeah, so I said <laughs> February is when they expect the Phantom Parade PC client to be out. And then they, they didn't have global on the roadmap at all. So I don't know if um maybe a little bit longer win. Client? Yeah, like it might be after the PC client is when they'll start working on that or what. Um yeah, I don't gonna... know if I'm gonna switch over. I might not, to be honest. Uh, honestly, if you love playing on the JP version, I would stick with the JP like, version. It's it's just super easy to understand on the JP version because the game is not that complex and like there's a website with everything translated already. So I don't know. I yeah. guess I'd have to see. So um, it's kind of similar to Fago in that know. stance. It's like it's very easy to just pick up and play, and you don't need to know the language. The only thing that's a bummer for Fago is that Fago has an intricate, very detailed story that is extremely good. Um, and that's kind of a bummer because I don't know enough Japanese to, <laughs> uh, to read it. Yeah, that does yeah. suck. Like uh, for for jjk it does have original story stuff so i guess that would be cool to read because like yeah. the current event is literally just like gojo's on vacation doing silly dumb shit oh, that'd <laughs> and, be like, fun to read yeah and i can't read any of it but uh people do translate it and put it up it's it's very funny Lisa's it's basically there. like gojo's on vacation and he's trying to do like one of those japanese things where like you get your stamps like all your stamps on the stamp thing by visiting all these places to oh. get like a prize He's basically doing like silly touristy shit. That's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then like he keeps stopping to help people, so he keeps fucking himself over. Like a, a kid gets lost, so he he spends like his entire day helping this kid find his parents, and then he's like, "Shit, I didn't get my stamp." <laughs> um, and then he finally gets all the stamps because it's like because Gojo's like a little kid basically, so he has like a really big sweet tooth. Um, and so the the treat that, that you get for all of it is like this special edition candy. Uh, and then after everything, the candy is curry flavored, and he's pissed because it's like spicy and not good, <laughs> and he's like furious. Um, and so he makes Ichiji the uh, the driver. He's like, "Take me to a candy shop right now!" And the guy's <laughs> like, "It's 11 p.m." And his response is, "I do not care. <laughs> Find me one that is open." And that's how the event ends. That's really good. See, I would love that. I would play the shit out of that on NA if they ever had it. Um, especially because, from what I've heard, it's kind of similar to Vago. Not a direct one-to-one. It sounds like it's obviously a more, less made with spaghetti code version of Vago. I've, I've heard that it, because I've, I've talked to people, I've never played Vago, so I yeah. don't know. But uh, I've heard people who have played both, and they've said that it's very superficially like Vago. Where, like, mm. combat is sort of the same way, where you, like, queue up your turn, and then you hit the button, and you, like, process the turn. Um... Mm. But that's like it is what they've said. It's not very similar other than that. So yeah, it's kind of like a, a look to it and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like yeah, inspired visually maybe. I don't know. I, again, I've never played both, but yeah, that, that's I've good heard that it's to it's me. similar but different enough that you don't feel like you're playing a reskin or something. Yeah, it's not like a uh, Yakuza Online, which is just um, what if War Collection never died and was focused around the Yakuza series instead. <laughs> Which which is what oh, I miss War Collection, man. I do too. Oh man, every single day I think about what it. What a good game that was. It was. I hope one day to become successful enough to make a bootleg. I want to make my own Pal World version of War Collection, <laughs> where, <laughs> where it's a uh, clear, not slight knockoffs, but not exactly the same, legally distinct we, enough version. <laughs> too, but for War Collection, yes. Oh my god! And then the first thing I'm doing is hiring you up as a dev and say, "We got some fucking cooking to do here. It's time to live out a fantasy." Do you remember how insane it was in War Collection that you could get any featured unit just by getting the three star one? Yeah, it was. was. It It was. It it was insane, and it was so good that I think that's what that's why they changed it in the shitty version of um, Tyson, which is the follow the in quotes follow up. Where yeah. you where you can do the same, but every unit sucked, basically, was what I understood at the end of the day. It was like, oh yeah, here you go. It's every unit, they're in every color, and most of them suck. 
Congratulations. Yeah, which is crazy because like in in actual or collection, you could get like I remember because I did this when Super Saiyan Two Gohan came out um, for Yellow, and he dropped, and everyone was like, "Oh, he, you know," because he's he's busted with Goku because you do like the the double. And first of all, it was cool because it was like the PvP combo was like Goku and then Gohan, and so it was like the father son combo. Yeah. Yep. Um, but then it was like you know uh, everyone wanted him, and it was five stars were still hard to get, right? Because any any gacha game of five stars hard to get. But you would get the three star, and then just leveling it up naturally, you could just awaken it to the gacha version of the five star. Like it was no. That's probably why I didn't make enough money. <laughs> there, there was probably a lot of... But when their main fan base was a bunch of foreigners that could only get it through uh, paying stones from a vendor, that's not... You're not yeah. living. Yeah. We, we tried our best. Again, my favorite part ever was when we were able to get the Twitter rewards for the first time ever during the anniversary, and the Japanese fan base said, awful lot of foreigners here. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, what's up with all these foreigners? <laughs> they sure are a lot. We were <laughs> we, we turned out, baby. We did for a brief shining moment. It felt like we were like the good side of the French community of Dokkan, where instead of everyone going, "Ah, oh, fuck, here come the French again," it was like, "Damn, the foreigners are here, and they're here to support our collection." Oh man, such a lovely, beautiful game. Uh, miss it every single day. It's a damn shame that it is gone. Um, and that there's it only really is it. There's only one gotcha game I've ever played that I think I like as much as it, and that's uh, Star Rail. It's the only one where I'm like, this game is really good. Yeah, <laughs> just it had, like that. It had so much cool stuff, man. It's it was so, so good, fun. man. Every time PvP, I think, I've never, I've never seen a game with better PvP in a gotcha. I've never seen a game with better presentation, like visuals. So many cool debates when we had that conversation debate of. Can Sasuke be considered cool headed? Yeah, because it was like yeah, all the different ones, and it was like the art they used was like crazy lunatic Sasuke, and we yeah. were like, "Is this really cool headed? Is this really cool headed?" Is like, what about? Didn't um... we end up having like a discussion with multiple people where we were like, "If Sasuke is considered cool headed, why isn't Frieza?" Yes, even though Frieza's in his crazy state right now. Why would he not be cool headed? That was the crazy thing. I think full power Frieza was on cool headed. That was the yeah, whole yeah, the buff one, the buff one that was like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you, Goku." Is he was cool head? Yes, but not. I don't think the the other version of him was. And also, it... it was really funny that one of the meta teams was a bunch of sports boys, and then Dracula mm. Mihawk. <laughs> Would love it. Love the athletes team. One of my favorites out there. It was the only reason that I can't wait for when we get to talk about Sket Dance on... Oh, there was a Sket Dance reference in Gintama. Because he goes, like, go heal up his bassoon. He's like, what is bassoon? And that is what they call him in Sket Dance. Uh, they have, like, a little mini Sket Dance reference in there. And it's really funny because your main interaction with Sket Dance and mine, too, with the original, is that they are the <laughs> motherfuckers who almost ruined our collection. <laughs> Oh yeah, when they dropped an ore collection and they were like really obnoxious in they, PvP because yep. like fun. They were the yep. number one team for so long, and then eventually they got to become scrub killer status. Where every time when we brought someone new into the game, we we're like, "Oh yeah, welcome back," and they're like, "Oh yeah, welcome, welcome." And then their first reaction would be like, "Man, what the fuck do you do against a skit dance team?" Yeah. Well, didn't wasn't die the one that killed that team? Um, what eventually killed that team was, uh, they couldn't compete with the new style of, like, full-on category systems, basically. Yeah, they... but I thought, uh, yeah, well, that too, but I thought, like, the reason that Die came out and was crazy was specifically that he got his ult before, or no, was it before Bobo Bo was what Die did. Die yeah. came out and specifically ulted before one really obnoxious meta character. It was, character it was Bobo Bo. Basically, it was yeah. It basically killed that character's use in PvP yeah. at all. And the the original team that you ran was Bobo Bo, the two members of Sket Dance, and then cleaner up, basically people to clean up, usually in AOE. And that yeah, was like enough. A big AOE burst. Yep, and that was enough to just completely win. Um, occasionally you would run a weird off meta team, like you could run all females because they were immune to Bobo Bo's stun. But the Bobo Bo stun and the Bassoon stun was enough to make it so that a lot of teams couldn't compete. Like, Bassoon was just an instant kill if you were a student. It meant that you yep. just could not beat Bassoon at all. Um, so it made it so that... And a vast majority of Shonen Jump Pro Tags, 
I don't know if you know this, are fucking students. <laughs> They're <Yep. laughs> almost all of them are. So it made it very difficult to fight. But eventually, when um, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan released, um, they also buffed Vivi, and that introduced the yellow team. And that yellow team is what catapulted away people from using Sket Dance because they could no longer compete in the pure speed of it. And then that's yeah, when that, eventually. And then, like, meta teams eventually started settling into, like, mostly colors. They were still, like, category-based. Like, yeah, the sports team. Yeah. But even that ended up being primarily just how green was played. Was just with, That's why Mihawk was on the team. Yeah, um, yeah that like, one... I, My final team, I remember, was primarily just blue. It was just, like... Uh, yeah, because that one had Hiei. Hiei, uh, Hiei was the one who made it possible, because he got Dragon of the Darkness Flame, like, almost immediately. Yep. Um, but, yeah, that was my favorite team. Eventually, it was the blue one. Mm-hmm. I really liked the cool-headed team, too, though. The cool-headed team was fun with, like, Light, who had all those shields on him. Yeah, Light was especially... Because the AI was never able to correctly pick up on Light, and that made it very difficult to uh, go against them occasionally. Um, uh, the the other team, the red team, obviously, because that one was the one that ran Cascade. Everyone's yeah, favorite horse. horse. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favorite horse. When we said... And it ran Yusuke, which was very cool. Yep. My brother just screams out Cascade because he remembers. He was there when Cascade yeah. dropped. And then, like, uh, I remember that, that team was good against the cool-headed team because Yusuke had a move that hit a bunch of times. So it would pop a bunch of lights, shields. Yeah. Man, we could literally talk about this game forever. It's so good. Like, it's I'm keeping... So <laughs> it's so... And, like, the PvP... Because like, you got units from PvP. That was, like, the way that you got them. It was, like, mm-hmm. by placing well in PvP. And, uh... They were good. Like yeah. that's how you got Yoko Karama, and yeah, uh, there was one. there was another one that was really Yoko Karama was always the best one. I feel like, uh, and but the, there was another PvP unit that was good. I just remembered in the uh, early days, one of the units he used with um, Boba Boba was Koro Sensei because he was the fastest unit at yep. that time, mm-hmm. and he was a PvP unit. So if you missed out on PvP, you did not get him. Um, Eventually, they made those gettable. Some I think they were in like yeah, a banner or something. They were um, a ma'am from Die from yeah from Dragon mm-hmm. Quest, and there was some I think from Hitman Reborn. It was some girl with an eye patch. Yes, with, really that made the awesome team of weak because it was nothing but characters who were considered weak in their series. Yep. Oh, it's so when it's funny because she was like a beast in the game. She, she like, was nuke your whole team. It was a legitimate team that you could use against them. And one of the ones that stopped them was funny enough Skit Dance because um, uh, Hime would use her ult and that would completely take out their back row and they would be instantly stunned because Skit mm-hmm. Dance was just always had a bonus against um, uh, students. Both both Hime and Basun both had it. Man. We could have had so much. There was a, the fortunately there was they never got to the point where they could release a Gintama unit, but the Shinpachi, the free to play Shinpachi that they had, had the from the fight, um, had his like one cool fight moment in it that was super well animated, because <laughs> all yeah. of it was manga panels. Oh god! I remember they had Demon Slayer in it. The, they that did. was surprised like the one character like before Demon Slayer got big, they had Tanjiro. God damn it! If only, if only. They had waited just a little bit longer for Demon Slayer to blow up. They could have did what, what Jumpudi did, which was just spam Demon Slayer dudes to get uh-huh. money. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> we could have. That... Could you imagine Aura Collection now with like Gojo and fucking <sighs> Sukuna and fucking Demon Slayer and uh, Denji from Chainsaw Man? Oh my god, I would love it so much. You could have made so the Delinquent team would have finally had its member. Denji uh-huh. would have been the ultimate delinquent for it, for sure. Even though I'm, there would probably be debates, does he count as a delinquent? Is he even a student? <laughs> he is by the end of part one. He is yeah. by the end of part one, for sure. But for early parts of it, I would consider him a delinquent, but maybe not. Do you need to be a student to be a delinquent? All questions that no, were... I don't think you need to be a student. I think a delinquent's just an ill-behaved child, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I would think. So I think that it would make yeah. him perfect for it. But, you know, occasionally when it comes to categories, maybe in Japan they think it's a little bit different. Um... Who knows? Either way, these were all the cool ass conversations you could have around. Um, uh, we need to have a video one day that's just like an hour and a half of us reminiscing about our collection. We should do that because oh my god, there's so many good details. Like the fact that uh, in the Yu Gi Oh characters, uh, both Yu Gi and Joey had luck, but Kaiba didn't because he doesn't rely uh-huh. on luck, he relies on yep. skill. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Oh, uh, dude, Yugi was so cool too. He was so fun to play. He was. He was one of the the early starting years. We have to end the videos then. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We will have that eventual or collection video again, so we can reminisce. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys later. If you have literally, we can go on for another thirty minutes. <laughs> That's how much oh my we God, love. Remember Orca. Golden Saint Seiya? <sighs> yeah, the video. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Say goodbye, Zed. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>